All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me. I really appreciate you tuning in and joining me on my off day. I'm just at home relaxing. And we are going to continue our discussion where we left off last time, moving down the overhead panel here. So the next section that we've got to talk about is the interior lighting section of the overhead here. So as you can imagine, you know, these all these switches are pretty straightforward and simple. So we're not going to have a, an extremely deep discussion systems wise on any of the, the things that I'm going to kind of outline for you here today. So we'll just keep it quick and simple today. The first knob on the left here is just the overhead integrated lighting dimmer switch. And as you can see, there's an off position. If you turn it all the way to the off position, you actually kind of hear a click. And it, as I said, it turns off all the, the backlighting for the overhead section there. If you turn it to the right, you just, you get to select what, what level of brightness or dimness, of course, related to the, the ambient light in the flight deck at the point in time, which we were using this, this lighting. But you can just see in this photo here, I took a picture of a dimmer situation in the flight deck and you can tell exactly what I'm talking about. There's this integrated lighting just serves to kind of backlight all the lettering and all the, the switch uh, locations, so to speak, of of all the buttons that we have on the, on the, the overhead there. And as you would imagine, this very straightforward. It just kind of helps us uh, quickly identify, you know, the buttons that we're intending to push and just navigate our way around the overhead. So it's just, like I said, used for night ops is when we're turning on the, the integrated lighting there. And it's interesting too, we'll, we'll talk about it at each point in time when we get to each section in the, in the discussion as we continue along here. But there's actually different zones in the flight deck that you can actually choose to have certain areas at different levels of dimness or brightness, depending on what you're needed to do. So it's just, like we said, very self-explanatory, but this knob specifically just controls the overhead portion of that integrated lighting there. The next button uh, moving to the right of that one is going to be the ice indicator and standby compass lighting. Now we'll we'll talk just a little bit more about each of these individual components. There's a few things I want a few things, excuse me, I wanted to mention to you. The first one, the ice indicator. If you missed that discussion, this was a couple sections ago. I think if you go back and watch the video on the, the ice protection systems on the airplane, we, we kind of talked about this a little bit more in depth. But if you missed that discussion, the, the very nutshell explanation, this, this little probe sticking off the, the front of the flight deck area there is just there to give us a way to, to know if the aircraft is accumulating ice or not. And there's a light that's actually built into this, this post here that allows us to illuminate this this. Um, this apparatus here, of course, in a night condition, if we're trying to ascertain whether or not there's ice accumulated on the outside of the probe here. So very simply, when you switch that the switch to the on position, you, you would kind of see lights through these little, the, the ridges here where the, the bulb is mounted inside the probe itself, but it would kind of illuminate it. And I'm, I'm still trying to remember when I'm out flying one of these times to actually take a photo of the probe at night. Um, just so you can have an idea what it looks like and how bright it is. And once again, I talked about it in that discussion. Um, it's pretty dim and it's actually kind of hard to see, but that is the way the system is designed. That's what the, the switch does for us. The next portion of that switch there, it, it turns a light on at the same time that the, the probe light would come on. It's the standby compass here. Now, right off the bat, a couple things interesting about the Airbus standby compass. They've designed it in a way that this, this can actually be hidden. So in the, the photo that you're looking at right here, this has actually been pulled out of the kind of the top level of the overhead where it rests at. So you, you pull it down and you can take a look at it. And normally this is in the stowed position. It's just kind of out of sight, out of mind. You don't really look at it. Most of the time we're flying around. As we said, if you turn that switch to the on position, it would just illuminate the, the compass section here so you could see what your heading is and you know, once again this is just for uh, the case of if, if things are going really bad and we need to know what direction we're turning this is a very bare bones simple system that we can still derive a magnetic heading of which way we're flying the aircraft so the standby compass is just standing by in case of an emergency and as you would imagine we're we're virtually almost always never using this standby compass for anything during our normal flight operations but the one time i've actually seen this used by a lot of different folks that I've flown with is they just kind of use it as a reminding device. And this is very much a technique thing. This is not spelled out in any manuals anywhere, but it is actually a great way on the Airbus to remind yourself to do something. And the, the most common one that I've seen is if we have a situation where maintenance has come on the airplane and they've taken the logbook out of the aircraft to do some sort of write-up or 
you know, document some sort of things that they, they fixed on the airplane. It's actually very important for us to remember that we've got the maintenance log return to the airplane before we go out and operate. So I've seen a lot of people just pull the, the standby compass down and this just serves as their reminder to say, hey, you know, we, we don't have the maintenance log back in the airplane. We need to get that back before we go offline again. So it's just, like I said, kind of a little technique thing. I've seen a lot of folks use this standby compass in this fashion. So just kind of a, a little extra bonus thing that I wanted to tell you about. So I think it's kind of interesting. Not a lot of people would guess that. The next button to the right of that is going to be the uh, the dome light switch here. So you can see we just have a, a three position uh, or three options on this switch here. We have off, dim, and bright. And very simply, as you would imagine, you know, it's kind of think of it like day mode and um, or I'm sorry, um, yeah, di uh, bright and dim, just just kind of based on what the um, the ambient conditions are. At the given time that we're flying around and, and you know, I, I, I took a picture of what this dome light looks like. There's one on each side of the flight deck. This is the FO side here and there's an identical one on the captain's side. So you can just kind of get an idea of where this thing is, what it looks like, what it's doing. So as you would imagine, this is primarily used for nighttime flight deck setup. So when we come out to the airplane and we're, we're getting everything all arranged in the flight deck, we don't need to have it in the, the complete dark conditions. We're, we're doing things with paperwork and we're setting up and putting our bags in different places and we're doing all these various things. We're getting ready to leave on the flight. But of course, when we start to fly, we'll turn the dome light off and we will acclimate our eyes to the night conditions and we'll, we'll do what we do during the course of our flight. And we might turn it back on when we arrive at the arrival station if it's still dark and we need it. But there's also a couple of other situations where you might find yourself using this dome light here where once again, I think these are things that most folks wouldn't readily guess off the top of your head. But number one, uh, we'll actually use this dome light a lot when we're flying around on red eye flights. And if you can imagine, you know, a red eye flight is one that operates during times of day where most people are normally sleeping. So it's like an all night flight, maybe going across the country. And for us up front, you know, there's, there's very much a, a need to of course stay alert. So we'll, once we get up and you know up to cruise altitude and we don't really need to have the dim flight deck, we'll actually turn the light on completely to the bright mode and just leave it on for the duration of the flight. And it's like I said, it's just kind of a little a way to help us maintain alertness. And you know, even throughout the course of the flight too, you know, we might be eating dinner up there, so it's nice to have a little bit of extra lighting. That otherwise it's very dim inside the flight deck. And it's just it's nice to have that dome light on and, and uh, be able to see what we're doing essentially. So. The other time um, that it's it's mentioned, it's actually in the, the AIM or the um, Aeronautical Information Manual, and there's various technique, uh, you know, flying technique books and stuff all through your flying, you might see this mentioned. But of course, it's a rare scenario, but it, it does talk about using the dome light uh, if you're flying in very close proximity to lightning. And the reason is, you know, when, if you're in a situation and there's these bright flashes of light going on around you, it can, it can be very, like, shocking. It, if you will, to your eyes, and it can be kind of blinding. So they just talk about turning on the dome light to add a little bit of extra ambient light and just kind of acclimate your eyes to getting used to these bright flashes that might be entering the flight deck if you are flying close to an area of weather. So like I said, a pretty rare circumstance that we're actually flying that close at night where um, you would need to turn on this, the dome light to kind of mit mitigate the, um, the eye effects, if you will, of flying that close to lightning. But just like I said, one other kind of interesting time where you might find yourself using this, the dome light there. And then the last switch is going to be the last one on the right there moving over. It is the, uh, the enunciator light button here. And you can see also this is a, a three position switch, just a, a dim, a bright, and a test mode. And um, uh, the way to kind of think about this one, I started to say this actually about the last button. I was intending to say this about this one, but think of this as a day mode versus night mode type of switch. So obviously during the day, we don't need to have the, um, uh, or I'm sorry, during the day, we would actually need a little bit more brightness to actually see the lights in the flight deck because there's so much ambient sunlight coming in that you need to have the switch in the bright position to kind of illuminate them a little bit more and just give you more readability. But of course at night, you would turn this to the dim position. So you, if you left them on, it's actually quite distracting if they are in the bright position. It's very noticeable, so you would just switch it to the dim position. And then the test position there, we use actually every time we do our initial flight deck setup. So the first time we're coming out and flying the airplane for the day, we'll turn it to the, the test mode and we'll just take a look at all the lights in the flight deck. And 
you know, I'll just bring up my slide here that we look at every time we talk, but you know, it just, when you move it to the test mode, it just turns on every single bulb that could conceivably come on in the flight deck. And you're just kind of scanning around the whole, the whole flight deck looking for one that's possibly burned out. And you would need to have this replaced for obvious reasons. So that is just uh, the purpose of the, the test position there. So hope this explains everything you might have been wondering about, guys. I know, like I said, it's a, a simple one today. But once again, I, I really appreciate everybody tuning in. If you like what you're seeing and hearing, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. It helps me get my videos out there and, and keeps the, the channel moving forward and, and um Promotes engagement, which is once again the, one of the biggest things I'm looking to do with the channel here, just uh, in the way of, of fielding questions. If you've got any questions, feel free to write them down in the comment section. I'd be more than happy to discuss them with you guys and tell you all I can that I know about um, whatever you might be asking. So hope everybody's having a great day. We'll talk to you again real soon.